This is the Selectman's meeting for June 17, 2010. First order of business, salute to the American flag. Approval of agenda. I make the motion to approve the agenda as written. Second. All in favor. Approval of the minutes of the last meeting. I make the motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Second. All in favor. Signing of the warrants. We would ask tonight anybody that has anything uh, to speak about, please come up to the microphone and uh, state your name for the camera. Uh, please, so that way it gets on uh, the microphone. Okay, we have no old business. Under new business, we have a letter from the Wakefield Advisory Board. The town of Wakefield is asking um, the town of Acton if they would help them a little bit in their cable contract. So Carol, you want to speak a little bit about that? Um, I'm going to their next meeting on July 6th. Um, anybody, any one of you that want to go with me, that's fine. Um, and I'm going to be talking to the director of their cable beforehand. Um, basically, they just want to compare notes so that we can help each other. Um, you know, find out what they're doing, find out what we're doing, and we can kind of bounce ideas off each other and work together. Um, so it's it's really exciting um, to get together with them and and see how they do things. Awesome. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Okay, we're going to be opening the bids for the land sales that we advertise. We had a gentleman in this afternoon that said he was going to come in and bid but he hasn't come back in, so at this time we have just the one bid coming. Okay. This is from Dawn and Randy Jocks. Um, this is for the back lot on Hawk Road. Uh, we would like to bid $250 for the above lot. How much? Two hundred and fifty dollars. And uh, they've got a deposit of fifty dollars, which is twenty percent. That's all we got. I'll make a motion we approve that bid. I will second that. All in favor? Okay. At least it gets back on the tax, the tax rolls, you know, and stuff. Okay, they got a piece of property in Hawk Road. And they have sent their fifty dollar deposit. Yeah. Okay. Down payment. We got, we got one. The other ones we had. How many other ones out there? We've got two more around Two more there. we got nothing for those. The gentleman that came in said that uh, the one on Middle Road is just swampy feet. And, of course, we know that the one on 13th Street is a parking place. Yeah. And that's about the extent of it. Huh? 13th Street doesn't want to buy that for a park? park. You sure? All right. Okay, we have number three, which is, uh, Larissa is going to speak about Tom Worcester. Okay, just to make that. it an official public meeting, it is a real estate agent who is working with a property owner here in town trying to sell a piece of property that unfortunately their contractor, although accepting the money from them and showing them receipts that say, said that their building permits had been paid, etc., never actually gathered the permits. So now that they are trying to sell the property, they don't actually have permits to have built what's on there and it causes some um, financial difficulties. The town requires them to pay four times the amount of the original permit cost. So um, Mr. Worcester will be coming in to discuss that situation, and so it is a formal public meeting. If anyone wants to come and listen, it'll be at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. 
Next we have the result of the salt bids. Uh, we're part of the uh, Greater Portland Council of Governments where all the, uh, the towns that are involved in this have them give, uh, get salt bids for the cheapest salt that we could possibly purchase. And I'll read some of this here. As the municipalities are receiving some very good pricing support this year from these bidders on the road salt and calcium products. Um, the Eastern Salt Company is the lower bidder on salt, which is uh, it's the same price for delivered or picked up sodium chloride for 57.65 per ton. Then you have the treated sodium chloride, which is treated with ice be gone, which is 81.27 per ton delivered and $81 picked up. Uh, that's from International Salt Company. Monson Company is the low bidder for the calcium chloride liquid. And there's a bunch of different prices for uh, gallons and all this. Uh, and then they have calcium chloride flakes, which are 1067 picked up, 1167 delivered. And uh, Hacros Chemicals is the low bidder for calcium chloride picked up $500 a ton, delivered $525 a ton. So this is what we're going to be. Now, we don't have to accept these, right. but, uh, but I, don't, I feel like you know those, we're not going to get better prices than these. <coughs> so I would say we would uh, you know, get the advice from the road, the road commissioners to see if they like these prices on the road. Yeah, Sound absolutely. Good? OK. <coughs> you need this? Okay, next we have a mass gathering permit application. Would you want to come up so we can ask you a few questions? Either one, either one of you. Okay. Okay, thank you. This is for a, uh, a car show, all VW car show at the Acton Fairgrounds. It's for Sunday, August 1st. Okay, and it looks like it's a pretty big one. Uh, it has been in the past, has yeah. Been good. yeah. And it's all VWs. All Volkswagen, yes, sir. Okay. So we have a $100 check deposit here. We have insurance, uh, liability, insurance. proof of insurance. And, um, you know, basically you're going to have a, uh, you've met with them on all your different things as far as... Uh, uh, yeah, I've gone through uh, pretty much everything with the uh, fairgrounds, uh, have the dates secured with them. They just wanted me to follow up with you, and then I need to follow up with the fire department. Okay. So you're going to have a uh, uh, sanitation disposal uh, in there? Uh, we're yeah. going to use the facilities that are on the grounds. We feel that will be adequate for the first year. Okay. We've done this before in uh, the last, like, 10 years. It's been in Windsor, uh, at the <coughs> Windsor Fairgrounds. Uh, the gentleman that was organizing it wasn't able to do it anymore, and I didn't feel I had enough to do. So I said I'd do it as long as I could move it down in this area. Um, That's great. Uh, thought of Acton Fairgrounds would be an awesome place to have it. Will you have um, uh, police on hand, sheriff's detail, or any detail? I don't. We've security? never had a problem with that. We've never had that at Windsor. Um, you know, it's a pretty low key crowd. Okay. Um, it's not necessary, but I just asking. Yeah. Him. Yeah. Uh, for for uh, medical. Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk to the fire department about is to yep. see if they felt it would be necessary to. Um, Either have them on standby or have a rescue actually. On we have a, a, a separate rescue, the, the ambulance mm -hmm. rescue department that you would speak with about that. Okay. And uh, sound system uh, time periods of when that's going to be used? Uh, it wouldn't be any earlier than 9 a.m. and wouldn't be any later than 3:34 okay. in the afternoon. No problem. Okay. <coughs> okay. Well, I think that's everything. Any questions about it? No. We'll make a motion we we'll approve the mass gathering permit. I will second that. All in favor? My first <coughs> car was a 1971 VW bus. <laughs> Great. Uh, I would suggest that you do contact the sheriff department, though, so that they okay. know a function is sure. going on Absolutely. at that time. Yep. That, that way they can be alerted to yep. if there's any problem. All right. Great. Oh, you got your own thing. Sorry. You have to drive a Volkswagen to go in there? Pardon me? Do you have to have a Volkswagen? Absolutely in not. No. I think there's only one <laughs> Volkswagen. <laughs> Public's are more than welcome, and, and uh, it's a great event. It's, you know, it brings back a lot of memories for a lot of people and a lot of nostalgia. And there's you know newer vehicles as well, newer Volkswagens. It's not all just old stuff. Yeah. We have flyers if anybody wants one uh, here of this. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
have a uh, treasurer check request that she wanted signed at the meeting. Um, this is uh, for 30 day lien notices. Mm -hmm. We have 312 properties scheduled for these certified lien notices and the cost per notice is $5.54 and we're required to send a copy to all the lien holders. So without, um, with, well, altogether the cost is going to be $1,700 which is coming out of the, uh, the lien cost account. So I want to entertain a motion on that. I make a motion to sign the approval for the post office. Second. Okay, all in favor? So. Okay, number seven, we have em employee agreements. Now, what we have is an, em an employee agreement starting July 1st for each one of our employees, and this will be for April Pettengill as the assistant assessing clerical and deputy tax collector, for Lorraine Yetna as secretary to the selectmen, Jennifer Rue as the town clerk, tax collector, register of voters, deputy treasurer, and IT support, Ken Paul as the CEO. Michelle Rumney as the secretary to the CEO on the planning board, Sherry Smith, treasurer and CFO, Steve Ledoux, transfer station manager, and Linda Capristo, assessing clerical support secretary to the selectman deputy town clerk, tax collector. So I want to take a motion. I'll make a motion. We approve the pay agreements for employees at the town hall. I will second that. Okay, all in favor. Okay, and we have to, uh, when we start, we start and yep. we'll cross the board. Now, would these were would these be considered appointments? No. No. So, do we have don't we have to do appointments as well? <coughs> we'll have to do those. Everybody? We'll have to do all those next week. The town clerk and the treasurer have three-year appointments. So, and we have to do Kenny's Pauls and because uh, they have to be in place for July first. Right. So, uh, right. That's I said the treasurer and the town clerk. And everybody. But everybody else doesn't have. Uh, they have to be all appointed by next week. Hopefully, by next Thursday, Lorraine will have the list ready for us. Okay. 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 We have a. Um, request for the, the, the office to be closed on June 30th, 2010 at noon. Now, June 30th is a Wednesday. Yes. We usually open until 4, right? Yeah. But because there, um, it's the end of the fiscal year, which we usually do this, we do this every year, because there's a lot of work that needs to be done um, to roll over in the programs, and um, they need to have some time where they can do that, so it's prepared for July 1st. So. Um, I want to take a motion on that. I make a motion we close it. I'll second. Okay, all in favor. Okay, done. Okay. Anybody would like to speak on any issue? Please come up at all this week. 
Muslim this week. I have a couple of notes. Go right ahead. Um, the Owls will be meeting on Wednesday next week. We have as our guest speaker this time round um, the Cancer Care Center, and in their honor, we will be serving a anti-cancer lunch. So it will be full of foods that are known as cancer fighters. Um, so please come and join us. It's at noon time on Wednesday, the 23rd. Um, the second announcement is that because of um, some scheduling conflicts, my daughters both do 4-H, and 4-H State of Maine 4-H days start on Thursday the 24th, and we are bringing up chickens, and so I am required to do some driving. And it's in Windsor Fairgrounds, um, and I cannot be back by 7 o'clock next Thursday night from that. We are not allowed onto the fairgrounds till 4, and Tony cannot, he has to work on Tuesday, so our other option is not available because he also has a job to do and he will be up north on Tuesday evening and cannot be back by 7. So I will not be here at next Thursday's meeting. Um, so. Anybody else would like to speak? No, I got something going. Okay. A year ago, a little over a year ago, I got elected to this uh, position. I have enjoyed my time here. Uh, I feel personally, uh, regardless of uh, the lies and different things that were set out about me, uh, that I've accomplished a lot in the year I've been here. Uh, I pushed very hard uh, with the Warren Finance Committee and, and the other selectmen to uh, get that generator installed at the school. Uh, which I got nothing five years ago. It's been sitting there all this time. Uh, for whatever reason, nobody really seemed to care whether or not we had a, a uh, generator down there or not for uh, Red Cross or to pr a preserve a five, six million dollar building uh, with, for freeze ups and different things. Um, I oversaw the, and I pushed very hard to get the town hall um, jacked up. For those of you that have uh, been around, you remember we uh, got into the position where we couldn't use the town hall and uh, the insurance company wouldn't let us use it at all and uh, then they decided we could. Uh, get that straightened out and uh, which I oversaw. Uh, thanks to Pat Main and a few other volunteers for the ones that have paid any attention at all. We do have a pretty good lawn out here that's starting to uh, come into it, which nobody has seen around here for many, many years. Uh, and I had a lot more plans to do around the town hall, things that need to be done. Um, it is very disturbing to me that certain people in this town and in the town hall and fellow selectmen, uh, as far as I'm concerned, took the low road when it came to this election. The, 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 the way I do business is a, a lot different than past selectmen. I feel that uh, everybody that uh, receives anything from the taxpayers uh, has to be accountable. And I held everybody at the same level of accountability. Uh, that was my personal view. And there was a lot of um, disagreements over it, uh, especially uh, last year. Uh, this year everything went pretty well. Um, I fought very hard for the fire department to uh, be able to get their vehicles they wanted this year. Uh, I supported them wholeheartedly with the Warrant Finance Committee. Um, there was a conversation, uh, Mr. Lots, a few weeks ago, uh, made a, I don't know, a, a discriminatory remark about Tony uh, not coming to all the Warrant Finance Committee meetings. Well, I went to all the Warrant Finance Committee meetings, and when we had our first meeting, we set up a schedule. And I told the Warren Finance Committee that Tony could not uh, meet on Monday nights and Wednesday nights. 
and when you have nine people involved quite often it's hard to figure out a night that might work so they set the schedules except for the municipal budget uh, for a Tuesday night because they thought that was one that all three slutmen really really should be there at uh, so the Warren Finance Committee knew full-heartedly uh, with all the meetings that Tony would not be uh, attending uh, and, it, and so it's kind of sad that somebody would imply in public that Tony was shirking his duties uh, he had to work Mondays and Wednesday nights and the Warrant Finance Committee set the schedule accordingly. The other thing that uh, Mr. Lotz, it's too bad he isn't here tonight, uh, I guess he got what he wanted so he sees no need to come back till next year when he doesn't like something. Um, the accusation that Tony or I uh, spray painted in front of David Cody's house was absolutely absurd, absolutely absurd. Um, the comments and the disrespect at this committee, of this committee at public meetings uh, by different school committee members uh, was disgusting. I have been to many school committee member meetings. I have been there as a slutman, a warrant finance committee, and I have never seen a selectman or anybody from the Warren's Finance Committee disrespect the school committee at one of their meetings uh, like this board has been disrespected a few different times. The other thing is um, the letters that were put in the paper uh, by school employees, half-truths, um, was also a bunch of baloney. Uh, their personal agendas uh, that they have, which is basically the same people that had a personal agenda when I left my job down for the school five years ago. Same core group. Losing the election uh, really doesn't bother me that much. I appreciate people's vote. I appreciate uh, the big turnout. Uh, but what bothers me about the election is the reasons why I lost. Because the lies that were put out there about me, uh, like I said, by school employees, uh, school committee, a few town employees, uh, is disgraceful. And there's still signs being put up about me, still signs around town about me. And last Friday night, uh, I picked up some signs. They had to get out there one more time before a town meeting to make sure people could see them. And I don't know if it's still there or not. Uh, Dick Weymouth, uh, last I knew, still had one down on his lawn about me. Uh, Bernard Yetton put one up last Saturday morning about me. Uh, you would think that they, would, they got what they wanted. You would think they'd be happy and move on with their lives. But some of these people are not content with winning. They would much rather try to destroy completely, uh, not just myself, uh, but my children and my grandchildren. Because that's what happens when you do something like that. And it has a huge effect. Uh, and myself, personally, I would never lower myself uh, to put a something in the paper uh, against somebody, especially without knowing the facts, uh, and especially because of their children. I wouldn't want their children to have to go through it. Um, I feel that I have done a, a pretty good job here. Uh, people don't have to agree, that's fine. Uh, Dave Cody made a statement uh, a little while ago about we need town policies. We've got to have policies to cover things. Well, you know something? This is the town policy manual now. Okay? When I came here, it wasn't even half this thick. Okay? And as anybody, especially on the school committee, would know, that policies are a constant um, 
pain in the neck, I guess, because you have to constantly work on them, uh, upgrade them. Uh, we finally got our final job descriptions today uh, from a very, very good employee, Linda Capristo. Um, and that's all our job descriptions will be in place uh, hopefully tomorrow for everybody that works for the town. Um, a, 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 the advice of the auditor, uh, one of the things that we had was um, cross-training people. Uh, and again, uh, I grabbed a hold of that and with the support of the other slutmen, of course, and pushed very hard to get that done. And that's been very successful, very successful. Uh, we have two uh, deputy town clerks now, uh, we will have shortly, as soon as April is appointed. Uh, we have two deputy treasurers now. Um, the uh, Linda has cross-trained and is in the town clerk's office, also in the Slutman's office. <coughs> Uh, some of these people are outstanding employees, and I hope in the future, um, when I'm not sitting in that office, that people uh, treat them and appreciate what type of some of these employees are. Um, like I said, I, I, I'm, I was criticized a little bit for not responding to uh, the letters that were sent out and the uh, articles in the paper and stuff like that, but you know, uh, I believe that people are going to do uh, what they want to do. Um, a year ago when I ran against Bob, uh, Bob and I sat at many meetings together before the election. We talked, uh, talked about our families and uh, there wasn't one crossword between either one of us. Uh, Last week, after that shenanigans pulled by Holly Mooney uh, about me threatening her children and all that, which is just totally unbelievable, Ted Kryzak met me out in the hall and put his hand out. And I shook his hand and I says, congratulations, Ted. He says, Dennis, I really want to thank you for uh, running a clean campaign. He says, under the circumstances, what was being said and done, he says, I don't know how you did it. And, uh, and I says, well, it's respect for the people. Um, there's, there's people that no matter what you do, you support them. Uh, when times are rough and the very first time that you do something uh, that they don't like, uh, boy, they'll turn on you bad. A lot of these same people that have been very negative about Tony and negative about me. Uh, they couldn't thank us enough uh, a little over a year ago uh, when we uh, denied Pat Hannon's liquor license. Uh, Bill Lott spoke to me about it. Uh, he called up Tony, thanked Tony, what a great selectman he is uh, for standing up for the people and, and, and uh, things like that. And then when you get, you're not doing something for some of these people, you really don't serve them up for us. Of but I will tell you that Tony Cogliandro is nothing but a professional. Uh, no, he didn't gavel me for tapping my pen. Uh, and I still do tap my pen. I tap my pen in the office. I tap my pen at home. And uh, lots of times I tap my fingers when I'm driving, so it's just a have it. very first criticism I had was, when we first had the TV, that I went like this while Tony was talking. Well, that's totally disrespectful. Um, so I tried very hard not to do that anymore, just like I tried very hard not to tap my pen in a meeting anymore. Um, it, like I said, Tony is a 100% professional. Uh, I have dealt with over the years many, many selectmen um, that have 
put off things, you ask things at a meeting, and you ask again the next meeting, and you ask again the next meeting, and you ask again the next meeting, and hopefully you'll stop asking so it'll go away so they don't have to deal with it. Uh, our former chairman was uh, very famous for that. Any issues that's been brought forward to us, uh, we've really tried very hard to uh, grab a hold of them. Uh, we've had no um, closed door meetings, regardless of what uh, we've been accused of. Uh, I said I, when I get elected that I would be here as much as I could. And I think I've done a pretty good job with that. Tony said that he had to work, make a living that he didn't know how much he'd be able to be here, but um, he'd do the best he could, but he'd all be available on the phone. Larissa, uh, when she ran and, and after she got elected, uh, was gonna be here so many hours a week on certain days. Um, and I realized that what you think's gonna happen, sometimes things change. Uh, but I follow through with my word. And we did not borrow money this year. Um, every time we have a payroll, I go through everything. If you look at the past payrolls, my initials on every page, every bill. Um, and this is no disrespect to anybody else, but I didn't do it this week. Uh, and I doubt you'll see initials on every page. This is how business used to be done. I wish Ted the best of luck. Uh, these people that rah rah Ted uh, when he's sitting over here and the first time he says no, uh, some people take it all right and he'll be the worst son of a gun that ever walked the face of the earth uh, to some others. Um, so I guess, um, I had one more meeting. Uh, I was very disappointed also uh, through this election. Um, I lost about 50 signs. Uh, they were ran over, they were thrown out in the bushes, um, ripped up, and some of them just gone. Uh, I would hope the ones that took them just wanted to keep them for keepsakes so that you know, they had their fond memories of me, but I doubt that's probably true. And uh, for the people that do have them, I really don't want them back because I won't be running again for anything. Um, another thing that kind of uh, bothered me a little bit was I put some signs over in front of the fire station. I put two signs over there next to the tire. And I go back two or three days later and they're gone. Yeah, whatever. Signs are missing every time I go out, you know. So the day before the election, I put four signs over there. And I come back a half hour later with my son, and they were gone. And I saw them stopped in the fire station, had a big meeting there. And I said to David Langley, I said, geez, I've only been gone a half hour, and my signs are already gone. You know, did you guys see anybody take them? He goes, uh, let's go talk to the fire chief. Now, so I did, and the fire chief said I had them taken down. And I says, why is that? And he says, because uh, I didn't want the fire department to be perceived as supporting one candidate or the other. And I says, well, I said, that's not really, you know, it isn't like I've got them on the fire station lawn. This is town property. It's within the state easement. Um, if it was an issue, you could have called me. And I said, he really didn't have the right to remove signs. I believe that's illegal. And he said, I could put them up on the Sandburn Road if I wanted. One thing that I thought was very interesting about that uh, comment 
uh, number one, I have wholeheartedly supported that fire department uh, with everything that they, uh, whether it's a liability insurance that they have just now and uh, another insurance that they picked up, which has never been, they never had before, uh, to stay neutral. And again, Ed's usually here, but he isn't. Uh, I thought it was very ironic that there was an ad in the newspaper him supporting Scott Mooney. Uh, so anyway, that's my take on my last year. And uh, I wish everybody well. I wish the Board of Slutman well. Um, and hopefully uh, people are smart enough to um, see that Tony is a great guy. He's a great leader. Um, and hopefully they see fit to make sure he stays here another year. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else for comment? Yes. Um, I would like to question the figure that was presented tonight for the liens that are being put on the properties in, town, in the town of Acton, 1700 and some odd dollars. Can you tell me how that compares with the liens that were put on the properties last year? Do you have a figure for that? How much? How much, how, how much are we talking for money? We'll figure it out. It's 554 per property. So it's more this year, Mayor. Yeah, it's more. It's I think more. last year was about $1,400, $1,450. So there's considerably more than yep, it was last more. year. Yes. Well, that's probably a reason for the, the economy the way it is. Yeah. When you um, send out a lien, you also have to notify the lien holders, which is a mortgage company, and some people have two, three, you know, we have to send out more. It's not just the properties we're sending them out to, it's the mortgage holders as well. But it is more than last year, considerably, correct? The lien's more than last year? Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. No, the actual amount of the liens. No. How much are we spending? The 30 day notice is going to be met in our account last year. It's roughly the same, we're actually down. The amount of liens are actually down, 30 day notice is still spending. The quantity is down? Yes. They were up, John. Sorry. Well, this is the 30 day notice. It's not lean. Right. It's all. Uh, and I think the number of lenders quote right. is lean. This is the 30 day notice to say if you don't pay within 30 days, we will hold it for that. Any other uh, question or comment? Okay. I'll we'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Thank you.